What sits at the core of what we call toxic masculinity? Hey all, I am Victor E. I help provide insight to empower and I wanted to talk about this concept that's been going around a lot that we refer to as toxic masculinity. Now, my approach with my clients, male or female, is a human-based one, a heart-centered one, where no matter what the behavior is that's going on, that's weighing on a person, behind all of that, we identify a part of ourselves that in formative years, in formative moments, learned certain things in order to survive. Things that we call maladaptive. So what is more maladaptive than concealing while trying to carry out our wants and needs? Concealing while trying to carry out our wants and needs. This is where now I was speaking to one client and he was insecure, insecurity about being perceived as creepy. So what is creepiness to a person, to a woman, but a, let's say in this case, a man who is not secure in in having his wants and needs met. So we think about toxic masculinity, machismo, you know, lying, I don't know, playing the field, being overly aggressive, using, yeah, anger and aggression seems like one of the bigger ones. But what sits beneath that? You know, we can, look at a person and label them and judge them and what this does is create further conflict it keeps them away pushes them away and exacerbates their wounding what we need is to see and hear people see and hear them Let's say, let's use gaslighting as an example. We can take the act of gaslighting. And, and break it down. Right, what is gaslighting? Distorting the truth, someone else's perceptions... and trying to overlay, force one's own reality on top of that. Saying you're not, you know, th that never happened. That's not true. This is what happened. This is what's true. And it can be very, very triggering. It can be very hurtful. Why? Because that person who's being gaslighted is not being seen or being heard. Their experience is not being validated. Now, what about the guest like Tur? Are they this horrible monster who has no compassion or empathy? Are they not human? Do they have no spark of goodness or divinity within them? Of course they do. So what's really going on beneath the surface, be, be, beneath, you know, man, woman, non-binary, who gaslights or who's trying to have their wants and me needs met in a very, you know, quote unquote, toxic or maladaptive way. Well, for the gaslighter, for sure, they don't feel safe and being wrong. They don't feel like they are allowed to be wrong. And that is a 
that is a trauma response. In their youth, in those formative moments for them growing up, they learned that they cannot, they're not allowed, it's not safe to be wrong. They always have to get it right. You'll see very likely that someone who who gaslights probably is also somewhat of a perfectionist. And that's nothing to be proud of, to be a perfectionist. And yet so many people wear it like a badge of honor. It's again, maladaptive, it's a trauma response. Feeling like we're not allowed to get things wrong, so we have to like strive for perfection. And so what happens when we're in a place mentally, emotionally, or physically where maybe we're burning out, maybe it's just not, it's just asking too much of us to strive for that perfection. Well, that's when we procrastinate or put it off or make excuses or try to get out of it. Self-sabotage, really just self-protection because we don't want to look bad and not meeting our or others or the standards and expectations that we project onto others that we think that they think that they want us to have or meet. So what is toxic masculinity and how do we approach it? That's a good question. And no matter who it is in your life that's going through this, it helps to remove the fear. You are safe, you are secure. So how can you meet with and connect with this human that's standing in front of you? How can you connect to this person who is so insecure based on their own experiences? That they feel that they need to be overly masculine, ineffectively masculine. How can you meet them like you're you know, talking to a child? Can you? Can you talk with your own inner child? How is your self-parenting going? Because a lot of what I see is blame. Right, this person has a problem. And maybe they do have a problem. But labeling them as a problem, rather than this human being has an ineffective way of approaching life, of approaching their own wounds, insecurities. Well, that's... That's no way to handle it at all, seeing each other as a problem.